noticed this in the tree the other day and said, what is it? Now, it's growing on a branch that's dead. So it's not, it's not a parasite, okay? It has to be an epiphyte. Epi meaning on and phyte meaning plant. So I looked it up and my first guess is, oh, that's what you call a um, ball moss, except the leaves on it are very long. I'm still going to go with ball moss, but very long leaf. So if you know what that is, do let me know. And yet, one of the things you find out is that ball moss is of the bromeliad family. Um, perhaps you have eaten a bromeliad before. One of their members is also the pineapple. So yeah. So here's this thing on a dead branch in a tree in my yard. Let's see if we can find a couple more. Okay, there's moss on this tree. That's moss, okay? And amidst the moss is another epiphyte. That, which is bright green right now, something called the resurrection fern. Um, in times of no rain, that'll turn dead brown. It'll look like bark. It's like, wow, just scrape it off. It's useless. But no, it gets wet again, and all of a sudden, it's green. And it rained last night and this morning, so right now it's bright, bright green. It's a very happy plant. Um... It's a fern, and if you look underneath, that's where its seeds are. Nah, I don't have good magnification with the phone. Or do I? It's velvety underneath. Okay, that helps it absorb moisture. It increases the surface area for gaining moisture. It also increases the surface area for losing moisture, but the way it plays the game, it doesn't care when it dries out. Also, there's another one. Okay. One of the things these epiphytes do is they tend to have very small seeds because they have very specialized needs, and one of them is, I want to be up high, and I want to be in the shade. So this guy, being in the shade, is good. That means losing less moisture. It's not on the ground, it's not trying to compete with any of the other things that are in the ground. Although, here at the very base of the tree, yeah, we've got all kinds of ferns growing because the seeds have slid down probably from up top. And here we have a monster. A visitor. The um, ones down at the base don't seem to be doing any worse than the ones up at the top. Uh, as long as nothing's chewing on them. You know, dogs walking past and polluting them. They seem to do just fine. And yet, there are plants rooting in the ground that need the ground. So, as far as the epiphytes are concerned, if it sits on the ground and grows, wonderful. But it's 
going to compete with people that need, or plants that need root time. So, <clears throat> oh, back up. Let's see if we can find some more Spanish moss. Hmm. There's a branch on the tree. The branch is not attached, but it's covered with one of the epiphyte that I'm not familiar with. But if you can see, it's got these tiny little flowers. I mean, what could pollinate a flower like that? Okay, well, I'm, I'm guessing mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are pretty good pollinators and also they bite people. Now that blood meal can lay 100 eggs, pollinating only gets you two or three. So it's a safe meal to go after the pollen, but it's a risky meal to go after you know an animal. Um, Spanish moss all the way up in the tree. Now the tree isn't dead. There's green up there. It's just not presenting at this time of year. Give it another month. It'll be green. Spanish moss has a nifty trick. A lot of epiphytes use. It's a cam plant. That's its um, mode of producing energy from sunlight. Most plants are C3 plants. There are some that are C4. And these refer to the actual method of production uh, getting sugar out of sunlight. Cam plants take it a step farther. And it's an adaptation to make sure that you do not lose any water. Because these guys, they don't have big roots. In fact, they don't have roots. Well, they have roots. But they're attachment roots, not pulling moisture out of the ground roots. Um, C3 plants, they drink a lot of water. They're very efficient at turning sunlight into energy. But in weird environments like there's not much water, C3 plants just die, okay? CAM plants, they thrive. And one of the things they do is they turn their stomata, the openings in the outside leaves, under the leaf usually, um, they turn them off during the daytime. And this makes them very efficient at maintaining water. They open them up at night when everything is uh, cool and they don't lose as much water. And they do that by forming uh, some carbon acids. One of them is malate. Um, if you've ever eaten a pineapple, you remember how it kind of bitters in your mouth and it, it puckers. Well, that's the acid. Um, normal stuff. People can deal with it. But other plants don't go that route. You gain in that you, as a plant, you gain the ability to not lose water, which, if you don't have roots, is important. Um, but you lose in other ways. It slows down your metabolism overall. So it's a trade-off. But for the epiphytes, for the tree-growing critters, or tree-growing plants, it seems to work. I mean, these guys are green in the winter time, whereas the tree has lost its leaves. It's too cold. It's not the right conditions. Beautiful things. Very much adapted to a niche that who knew was there? Resurrection fern. Pretty green right now. 
Give it another month. If we don't get water, it'll be absolutely dead. It'll look like that bark. Amazing critters. Well, plants. If they didn't exist, we wouldn't have oxygen. How cool is that?